How's it going folks? Thought I'd um, shoot a bit of an aquaponics update. Uh, feed the fish at the start and as you can see I need a bit more fish food. Got another bag on the way. So we'll toss this in for the little jades and see if they're hungry. They may not be. I put a little bit in before earlier this morning and um, yeah they're a bit sluggish. Oh, but it looks like they want to polish that off. Uh, the fish at the moment are getting around about uh, 170 grams of feed a day. I need to actually pull them out and um, probably about four or five of them, just weigh them up and get a little bit of an idea on the weight and then um, yeah, hang on fellas, slow down a bit, uh, get an idea on the weight, do an average and yeah, work out their feed rate from there. At the moment the water temp is around about 26 degrees, oh, I might have gone down a bit, it's a bit of a cooler day today, and 22 degrees Celsius. So uh, from memory that's around about 1 to 1.5% sorry 1.5 to 2% of their body weight in feed twice a day. But I thought I'd do a little bit of an update um, and answer a couple of questions. Um, I had one pop up the other day someone asked me can you grow enough food in the grow beds to feed the fish to keep the system going um, sustainably. Uh, no you can't folks uh, just to answer this question off the bat. Um, basically if you were to do that you're using the waste from the fish to grow your plants and then you're feeding the plants back to the fish and there's no nutrients coming in from outside the system and that way you know the plants would be pretty um, sorry the fish would be pretty malnourished as would the plants if they grew it all after a while you really do need external inputs coming into the system for both the plants and the fish to thrive so um, please don't be suckered in by those people on our uh, Facebook groups in, in particular. I just thought I'd throw that in at the start. I, I see when I see people say that you can grow all the food you need for your fish in your grow beds. Um, it just really annoys me and I just sort of clear that up straight away. Uh, but yeah, the grow beds. Yesterday the grow beds were looking uh, a lot different. We had a load of lettuce in there that had gone to seed. Some had actually set seed. Uh, the Okinawan spinach has just taken over the end of one of the beds. It has had the uh, Kangkong or the Chinese water spinach. Uh, it had just started to grow legs again. So I decided to do a bit of a cutback. Uh, first thing I did though was I harvested a load of lettuce seeds from one of the plants that had gone to seed. It was a cos or a main lettuce and um, decided to put some aside for use later on. And then I took a load of the lettuce out of the bed and yeah, the plant that had gone to seed, I just gave it a bit of a tap and a bit of a shake over the top of the bed and hopefully we'll get a couple of seedlings pop up soon. And this is pretty much all what the bed looks like now. Uh, thanks to a mate of mine, Mark. Thank you very much, mate. Um, I planted in endive. Wrong time of year for endive for us. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. At least we'll get some flowers out of it and maybe save some seeds. We have got a Chinese cabbage. Um, not too sure of how this variety tastes. I've never grown it before. But yeah, we'll probably grow it as a leafy green. It's another cool season crop and we are in... Um, summer here and we also have I think it's a black mamba spinach as well and again it's a uh, winter crop for us here but um, hopefully fingers crossed we'll get a couple of leaves out of it and also some winter time up in this area here. Um, the reason I've got these plants here in this bed is because um, they are cool weather crops and we do have the shade cloth here that gives them a little bit of shade from the sun through the day. Worst case scenario, we'll get some seeds from these guys and some flowers to bring in the beneficials. Um, but yeah, those lettuce seeds will just explode through there in the next couple of weeks. We'll get loads of leaf lettuce. Uh, the ginger's not looking too happy in here. I have had experience with ginger growing before, believe it or not. And I found in the aquaponics when the system's heavily salted, you don't get a bumper crop. And a couple of months ago, I did salt this system. So the salt levels are still pretty high, but yeah, I'm, I'm fairly confident it'll set a decent rhizome by the time they need to be harvested next, probably July. Uh, the carrots over the back there are slowly taking off. Um, they were <laughs> uh, crowded out by some parsley in this corner here and also the um, lettuce growing over there. So they'll start to um, get a little bit more sunlight now. Oh, by the way, uh, the bell siphons are out on all three beds at the moment and I just have the standpipes in there because we had a bit of a heavy rain event the other day. We had roughly 85 millimeters fall in probably about an hour and a half to two hours. So yeah, I've just decided to um, pull the bells off of them so we can maintain as much water in the beds as possible from the rain. And um, I can guarantee you if I put the bells in, the system will overflow a little bit. And I'll just um, pop a bell in. Actually, I could probably pop one of the bells in from these smaller beds today. And uh, the others will just um, go in later as the water is used up by the plants. 
Just quickly before we move to the next bed, a bit of a heads up for you folks who are new to the channel. I've got a load of um, playlists out there on aquaponics builds and individual videos as well. There's actually a playlist looking at the filters I've built for this system here, so check that out if you're interested. The playlist includes an explanation of what radial flow settlers are and the build specific to this clip here, as well as a look at the moving bed biofilm reactor we set up and the fines polishing filter as well. So check that out if you're new to the channel and you want to learn more about the filtration. There's also other playlists um, that'll pop up below the clip in the description, looking at different as um, aspects of aquaponics from this system, as well as our previous systems and a couple of DIY build ones as well. So hope you enjoy them if you suss them out. Back to the beds. Uh, I'll give you a bit of a look around here. Uh, as you can see, the Okinawan spinach has been cut back a fair bit. What I'm trying to do is train it to come down this side of the bed and that way we've got more planting space over here. Uh, I do have some unknown brassicas pop up here. I do have a memory of um, just scattering some brassica seeds in here, but I'm not too sure what they are. I don't know whether they're a Chinese cabbage, a bok choy, a pak choy, or a broccoli. So far they're looking more like a kaylan, which is the Chinese broccoli, or a uh, broccoli leaf. We'll probably just harvest them as a small leafy green because I don't think their um, heads are going to grow too large through our warm summers. Um, over in that back corner there, I planted out a red vein sorrel. Thank you again, Mr. Mark. Um, it doesn't really like full sun, but I've had it grown perpetually in the aquaponics before. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed that will do okay. It's got a nice little um, zesty lemony zing to that one. So we really like that one in salads. And uh, some of my remaining purple lettuce ruffled lettuce. Uh, the heat the, uh, the other week just fried them. Uh, the clay got too hot in the early morning. We had a couple of really hot days, high 30s. And um, yeah, I've only had three survivors, but I've got loads of seeds saved from that, so I can pop them out later. A little basil still powering along, still harvesting bits and pieces every now and then. Uh, you can see that the sun yeah, does knock it around a bit. Just go around the end of the bed, and this is what happened to the Kong. Um, yeah, it was just absolutely mammoth trailing down onto the ground. You can actually see a bit down here. This uh, was from the last cutback. It actually set root down here in the grass. So um, yeah, it, it is a very hardy um, plant. Uh, one little discovery I did get yesterday while I was chopping this back was that the Kong had smothered a green onion and the green onion had started to rot. And I don't know if they're gonna be there now. Oh yeah, there's a couple there now. It was absolutely covered with red wrigglers yesterday. Um, so, yeah, it's a good sign to see these guys in the bed doing their thing, breaking down organic matter that's left in there and turning it into plant available nutrients. Uh, but a quick lesson number two, um, red worms, well, red wrigglers will not look after all the solids that go in your grow beds. I know there's a couple of people out there who reckon that you don't need filtration and you can let all the fish crap go into your um, grow beds and the red worms will eat it all up and it will magically disappear. Doesn't happen, folks. Uh, these little fellas down here need to poop as well. And not all of that poop is um, made into plant available solids, so it will build up in your beds over time. Uh, but I'm thinking about doing a bit of a um, frequently asked questions clip soon, and I'll cover uh, that in a little bit more depth later on. Uh, the little eggplant here is a long Asian variety, and we have one here along with a couple from down the back that will be harvested tonight and go into a Japanese sunshine curry with some sweet potato that's store-bought. This plant here actually got thinned out yesterday as well. There were so many little suckers you can probably see I've um, snipped off down the bottom there coming up. I didn't want to get the, let the plant get too bushy because we don't eat a lot of eggplant. And along with the other plant down the back, we're going to have more than enough for ourselves. Also too, we did have that uh, mite issue, if you remember from a couple of clips ago, with the uh, beetroot down the other end. And I know mites love um, the um, eggplant, so I figured if I cut back the majority of the leaves and open it up a little bit more, it means the predators can get in there and look after them. We have seen a lot of la uh, common ladybugs around lately, and I know that they eat mites as well. So yeah, um, trying not to spray if I can help it, but if I have to, there are a couple of organic measures I can use. Um, in here in the aquaponics. Uh, next bed, we'll have a bit of a gander at, is the carrot bed. I've actually got one going to flower. Uh, these are a Manchester table carrot. I've had loads of carrots go to flower in the past and we've saved the seeds and grown them again. Um, they make for a very spectacular flower head. Um, they look a bit like Queen Anne's lace. So we'll save some seeds from these and see how they go. But we have been eating a number of these carrots. We've been cleaning up, uh, working from the bell siphon um, housing this way. So I've eaten a fair few of them. And just to give you an idea on the size, uh, they're not massive, 
get some clay out of the way. Uh, they're not massive, but they're good enough to pull out neat. We'll pull this one out. So they are a decent size. I can probably push him back down and he'd keep growing, but I might take him out and feed him to the, um, the mealworms we have upstairs. So yeah, carrots can be grown in aquaponics. Um, I won't pull him out now because he'll probably pull some others out with him. I'll just leave him be for now. Uh, over here, another plant from Mark is a perpetual spinach. I've grown these before. An awesome plant. Uh, grew for two seasons from memory. So pretty chuffed about that. And just some of our own um, Chinese red shallots that came from Muggsy Jeff, a bit of an Aussie YouTube legend. Doesn't post anymore, unfortunately. Um, over here, we have some self-sown um, green onions. A little one down there, another one there. Actually, I forgot to show you these ones over here. We've got a couple coming up. There's the actual, the end of the seed head there, just underneath um, the eggplant in this bed here. So pretty chuffed about that. We'll have some more green onions soon. This tomato down here was starting to show some signs of bronzing on some of the leaves. So I gave it a bit of a spray with some Castile soap with uh, mint oil in it. And hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, it um, will knock most of them on the head. And then I'll do a bit of a rotational spray, as I mentioned to the guys in our um, supporters hangout. Probably wettable sulfur next. And then I'll do another spray afterwards with a white oil or maybe a neem oil just to knock them on the head. Um, apparently it's a good idea with mites in particular to do a rotational spray of different treatments um, just so the mites don't get too used to it. Uh, just down here we have another um, one of Muggsy Jeff's red shallots and we did have some more brassicas pop up over there but some sort of bug has eaten them or um, caterpillar. I'm fairly sure it's one of those Heliophis variety. Uh, just over here, a bit of a pride and joy, and thank you very much to Hugh for sending me the seeds. Um, this is a true Argy Amarillo chili. Uh, now, I was calling my sunshine chili an Argy Amarillo when I first got it. They're the little yellow chilies, but apparently um, that's incorrect. It's not a true Argy Amarillo. Um, these guys here, they're actually um, setting their fruit differently. They're growing up rather than hanging down like the sunshines and Hugh shared some pictures of his from last year so I do know they are a true variety so I'm really looking forward to finally um, tasting a true one. Oh, while we're here I said I wasn't going to to the supporters but here's just a bit of an update on our vanilla orchids. These guys here have started to um, set air roots out onto the timber stakes so they're nice and secure I can start to take off the bands down here and this one here I actually accidentally planted upside down um, I thought this was the um, base, but it was the tip. So I knocked all the leaves off down the bottom, leaves off down the bottom, just left one, then realized it was, um, yeah, I did the wrong end. So I popped it in the right way and it has set off a little branch down there and it's got some little air roots or tendrils coming out. So fingers crossed we'll get that one established to the um, stake soon. And yeah, we'll have a um, couple of vanilla orchids we can take cuttings from to grow more plants and uh, more importantly, maybe pop one out the back at the base of a tree. And we're back around at the fish tank, and it doesn't look like they're that hungry. So I'm going to have to net this feed out, and um, probably put some in the sump tank for the catfish, because I know he needs a feed. Um, but these guys here, as I said, were fed earlier. They've actually had a fair bit to eat um, over the last couple of days. I kept throwing lettuce leaves in for them yesterday for them to snack on, and they pretty much all demolished everything I tossed in there, and also picked off loads of grasshoppers. And I've been, whenever I find them around the patch, I toss them in the fish tank and they make very short work of them along with any small caterpillars that we find as well. So yeah, we'll leave these fish be. So don't forget to check out those playlists I mentioned before. Links are in the description and there'll also be a little thumbnail that pops up at the end here. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who does come along and support the channel every time I upload and sharing them around with your family and friends. I really do appreciate that. It's always great to say g'day in the comments section down below if you feel like saying g'day. I also need to thank those awesome folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership program and also our very own Farm Your Own Yard supporters website page. Thank you very much, folks. Really do appreciate the support. Our links to our super contributors, as always, are in the description down below if you want to show them some love. But I will pretty much will leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy, and I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a top one.